Hey everyone, I'm really glad to be back. It's been well over a few months now, hasn't it? Anyways, let's uh, get some insight of what we'll be covering. Treasure Math Storm, released in 1992 for Windows and Macintosh, was an educational computer game made specifically to teach to maths. Helping kids aged 5 to 9 to be able to solve mathematical problems. This game is indeed a sequel to Treasure Mountain, made by the people behind the Reader Rabbit games. The learning company, aside from making quality sequels to Treasure Mountain such as Treasure Cove and Treasure Galaxy, TLC did make two versions, one of which was the CD-ROM I grew up with, but today we'll be covering the very first one. Won't that be fun? Come on, I know you want to smile! The Learning Company presents Treasure Math Storm, developed by... <coughs> the Learning Co An improvement noticeable from Treasure Math Storm is that its soundtrack is vastly better than Treasure Mountain. Master of Mischief has invented a machine that can change the weather. He took his machine to Treasure Mountain and put the mountain into a deep freeze. Find the treasures and take them to the castle. Become the hottest super seeker on Treasure Mountain. Welp, shall we sally forth? So, we start out in the clubhouse under the mountain with the dove explaining that she'll be giving you hints to help you learn how to play. You then walk out of the clubhouse after marveling at your empty shelves of soon-to-be trophies, which you would have no way of knowing he was going to get. So you start off with some nets that you use by pressing space to catch the elves that ask you math problems. You know. 2 plus 2, 5 minus 3, 8 times 2, and so on. You want to catch the elf with a scroll that tells you in what way you have to place snowballs to the bottom left of some areas in order to get a gift from the pile of said snowballs. There are three gifts of, out of like five different areas. There are three levels in this game. The first one is the one we're on, and going west leads you to the store you can buy more nets from, one cent to three cents. And if you continue west or east, it really doesn't matter. Then you'll get to these rooms, depending on which level you're on, that ask you to tell the time on a clock, balance weights according to the number of pounds in the second level, and the third level where you count all the crystals shown before your very eyes. If you're too tired to do the time igloo, the gold room, or crystal cave levels, the store I mentioned just a little while ago sells the tools for a high price. Six cents? I can't pay that much. I don't even think my tab could cover that. Are you crazy, lady? You know what? This game is really good for the most part. Its controls aren't shallow at all. It's easy to master them. Definitely, because it's for a younger audience. And even the idea of a catch and release mechanic is quite refreshing in a weird kind of way. But I'm gonna be honest, this does get really boring. Okay, so the first tools are the four pickaxes, which you get them and the three presents on level one. You could advance to the next stage, then you do it again, catch the scroll elf, arrange the snowballs, collect the gifts, make equal the weights, advance by catapult, then it goes again. Catch the scroll elf, arrange the snowballs, collect the gifts, count the crystals, advance with four ladders this time. And you have to go into the castle, but there's this yeti creature that asks you a question. What comes after blank? You answer the easy question to go into the castle. Climb up the ladder and give your nine gifts to an elf. You then jump out of the window with a parachute and walk into the clubhouse where the dove says you have to collect a certain amount of presents to actually beat the game. Well, I guess since the things we want in life don't come easy... I have to, I have to beat it. I have to spend like hours and hours. Let's do it. Oh, no. Oh. 
Oh my gondola! I, I did it! Really? This is, is, is this what you're gonna do to me? This, this is what you're gonna do to me? <laughs> I'm not actually dead. I'm just acting that way. It's called a reaction.